Hi, Lucilia. I wish you could create a video that talks about productivity. I've seen you do everything. You are a real estate investor, a YouTube content creator. You are in a relationship and you also have to take care of your family. How do you do it all? I was just wondering if you can actually share a couple of tips that I could possibly implement in my busy schedule. If you happen to be that person who requested those tips, don't worry. You have finally arrived to the right episode. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode at Noble Rice Invest. If this is the first time you're tuning into this channel, well, let me tell you, this is your channel for real estate education. So today it's going to be all about productivity and mindset. I'm going to go ahead and share with you a couple of tips that I've implemented so far that has worked wonders if you have a very hectic and busy schedule. And without further ado, let's just dive straight in. So first things first, what do I do as soon as I wake up? Well, I check this rank right here. So this is called the auto rank and it's more than what it seems. It's not just simply a piece of metal. So what this rank does, it tells you a lot of things. Aside from just the usual how many steps you had and the calories, it tells you the quality of your sleep. You heard that right, the quality of your sleep. Have you ever heard of that saying that goes, it's not so much about quantity, but it's more about the quality of it? How many of you have actually went to bed and slept maybe seven, eight, nine hours, and you still wake up really, really tired the next day? Well, I've been there and I'm sure you've been there as well. Well, it has to do with the quality of your sleep. How many hours did you get in terms of deep sleep? How much of it were REM sleep? Because throughout the night, we all get disturbances, right? Sometimes we hear a bit of a noise and it already wakes us up. And yeah, you eventually fall asleep, but that already makes a disruption and it disrupts the sleeping pattern. And I know some of us eventually wake up in the middle of the night because maybe we need to go to the bathroom. We drank a lot of water uh, right before bedtime and we just need to get up and just use the restroom, right? So this rank helps me determine or learn about the pattern of my sleep and also the quality of my sleep. And based on that, I'll adjust everything I do throughout the day. So let's say, for example, if I have planned to work out for two hours, uh, heavy weightlifting or maybe a kickboxing class or something like that, based on that, let's say from a scale of uh, one to 100 and I get a readiness score of like 60 because of my sleep, then I scale it down a little bit. Why? Because I want to preserve that energy to continue to do what I need to do in terms of work. So instead of working out for two hours, instead of that, what I wind up doing is maybe doing a yoga class for 45 minutes or maybe for an hour so that I can still have that energy that allows me to create more content or engage with my team and just, you know, take care of everything that I need to take care of. Once I have all that data, all that information ready, it is literally the first thing I check as soon as I wake up. I grab my phone, I go through the app and I get all that information. Once that's done, I go immediately to the restroom and I brush my teeth. Yes, it sounds very simple, but brushing your teeth is extremely important. Why? It's very simple. When we go to sleep, our mind probably feels like we're resting, but our body and our brain, they never stop working. So what our body does throughout the night is to cleanse anything that's toxic and help us get ready for the next day. And as every cleansing, you have waste and that waste has to come out somehow, right? And the way it comes out is through our mouth. That's why when you wake up in the morning, you have bad breath. For those who are already in a relationship and you have your partner, that person can tell you for a fact that when you wake up, you have bad breath. And if you don't have a partner yet, you can do a simple test and it's just to clap your hands like this and you can blow into your hands and then smell it, feel it. That's toxic. That's waste that our body naturally takes out of our body while we're sleeping. And I've seen tons and tons of people just wake up, head straight to the kitchen, drink water, eat breakfast, and they don't brush their teeth unless they have to get out of the house. So imagine that cocktail of uh, toxic waste that you're creating. You're having breakfast, your sandwich, your eggs, coffee, mixed with all those toxins that are already in your mouth and you're already pushing them back in. <laughs> Literally, that's what happens. And then that same night that you did that, your body has to work now extra hard in order to kick those waste out. So one way or the other, you're already starting to impact the quality of your sleep because of that. So remember, first thing first, brush your teeth, get all of that out, use some mouthwash and push everything out. 
once that's ready, right, and I'm, my teeth are nice and clean, I go ahead and I go into my meal, right? Ideally, you should eat all your three meals. If you can, five to six, you know, a little healthy snack in between. But if you can, make sure you get your three meals, especially breakfast. Do not skip breakfast. I've met so many people throughout my life that they just simply think that they can lose more weight by skipping breakfast. That's not true. In fact, you actually slow down your metabolism when you're skipping breakfast. But I got sideways. The reason why breakfast is so important is think of it this way. When you wake up, your mind, it's very fresh. It's full of energy, it's radiant. It's, your mind is like a sponge. You take in anything you can, all the information that you can. But just like everything, if you don't feed it or let's think of a car, right? If you're not pumping gas into your car, eventually it's not going to take you very far. So our bodies are very similar to the analogy of a car. When you're working and you need that energy, eventually that energy is going to run out unless you feed it fuel. And by fuel, I mean a nice meal, a nice breakfast, uh, something that contains eggs or the proteins that are necessary, or maybe some oatmeal, things that are going to propel you to continue to work on your body. And that takes me to my next tip, tip number four. So, so far we have check the information in my ring, and then two, you brush your teeth, three, eat your breakfast, and number four, I exercise. And by exercising, I'm not talking about um, just for the physical part of it or looking good. It, it's, it goes way beyond that. And I like to use the analogy of a car once again. So funny enough, our bodies are like a car, a vehicle. But interesting enough, we take care of our cars more than we take care of our bodies. It's, it's kind of insane, right? Because if you think of a car, what happens when you use it a lot? You add a lot of mileage to it and eventually the car breaks down. Same thing happens to our body. That's why athletes, they get injured, right? Because they push their bodies to the very limit. But the same thing happens to a car that you don't use. The battery doesn't start. Um, the tires, eventually they uh, lose their shape. They um, run out of air because it's just part they're doing nothing. The same thing happens to our body when we're sitting for such a long time and we don't do any physical activity. That's when our bodies start aching because you're not using the muscles. You're not using your body to what it's supposed to do. And by exercising, I'm not saying you have to be the next Serena Williams and, you know, get into extreme sports and anything like that. All you need to do, it's at least 30 minutes of a physical activity, at least three to four times a week, right? Something that gets your heart pumped up. And um, so that way you can um, improve that circulation and bring oxygens to your brain and throughout your body so that ideas continue to flow. Sometimes we feel like our creativity is kind of like clogged because it's not coming our way. And part of it is because maybe we're just tired. Maybe our brain is not getting enough oxygenation. So by doing exercise, you can make that happen. Now, I know that for some of you, you'll probably might be thinking, hey, even 30 minutes, it's a lot to ask from me because I really have a very busy schedule. So uh, for those who are extremely busy and find it very difficult to carve out 30 minutes out of their busy schedule, I figure out a way to also do the same for me, because my schedule can be quite hectic sometimes. So what I did was to purchase a small device on Amazon that sort of works like a pedaling machine, so to speak, and you can use it while you're sitting down or you can use it while you're standing up either way. So for example, when I'm sitting down and answering to some emails or like creating content, what I do, I, I place that device literally underneath my feet, under my desk, and all I do is just start pedaling slowly. And what it does, it, it brings circulation to your legs, right? It it's just keeps your body uh, from just sitting there static. And for those who have actually tuned into my prior episode about productivity, where I actually share with you the tour of my apartment, you would have noticed that I also have a stand-up desk. If you haven't watched that episode, do not worry because I'm going to link um, the episode down here in the description box below so you can actually check it out after this episode. But back to this conversation in particular sometimes i do feel like i want to stand up maybe i want to stretch a little bit so what i do i just push the button my desk goes all the way up and in addition to that so what i do is i take that same device that put on the device and i start pedaling while i'm standing up and working on my desk at the same time and sometimes what happens is that you get so embedded in your work that you just simply forget about it and little did you know that maybe 30 minutes went by already right so there are multiple ways to actually incorporate exercising throughout your day 
for those who manage to carve out the time, an hour or two every day, that's great. But you can even make it more productive, which is something that I like to do as well. And that will take me to the next tip. And that's simply, I like to learn. I like to feed my curiosity. I like to feed my brain. And um, coming from a person who's busy, I do have to admit that sometimes it is very difficult for me to sit down and grab a book. By feeding my curiosity, I'm not talking about going to college or taking another training. It's just simply reading and getting more information, whether it's from the newspaper or any book. So what I do is that I try to incorporate that in my exercising. So let's say, for example, on those days that I have a heavy workout planned out, let's say an hour or two of heavy weightlifting, what I do instead of listening to music, I listen to audiobooks. And if I want to maximize that even more, I listen to those audiobooks in two times speed. So that way I can absorb as much information as I can while I'm doing something good for my body and for my brain. So I'm killing two birds in one shot, basically. And I know a lot of you guys do that as well, because I've read some of the comments where you guys are sharing with me that, uh, the first thing you do when you hit the gym and you're running in the machines is literally to just watch my YouTube videos. I have some of my followers, uh, Gladys, who's also a mentor in a real estate Nova program. She actually walks to work. It's a, uh, I think about 30 to 40 minutes. And what she does is that she listens to audiobooks. She listens to our channel, Nova Vice Invest, and she absorbs as much information as she can. And now we're going to move on to actual productivity, getting work done, right? But before we do that, if you're enjoying this episode, do not forget to hit the like button right here below so you can help this episode rank and help other people like you who are looking for this type of information. So on to productivity, getting work done. What is it that I do to ensure maximum productivity? Well, I put my phone in silent. Not necessarily turn it off, but I put it in silent. I cannot afford any distractions whatsoever. Why? Because even as little as this distraction may seem, it will disrupt your flow of whatever is it that you're doing and it's going to decrease the quality of your productivity. And if you don't believe me, think about a dog, for example, a dog that is sleeping or taking a nap. And then as soon as that dog hears something, what is it that the dog does? It's, it just lifts its ear, right? The dog might still be asleep, but they are on alert mode. They're probably thinking, okay, I heard something. This is highly unusual and I need to be alert. Maybe I need to protect the house. Maybe I need to protect mom and daddy, right? And so the same thing happens with the human mind. And every time you don't put your phone in silent, every time you get a notification in your phone or even in Facebook, you might have the willpower to just simply not check that message. I guarantee you, you're not gonna be 100% concentrated. Why? Because part of you is probably wondering, oh, who is that? I wonder what the message said. Is it coming from mom, dad? my boyfriend, my partner, or somebody that I like, or somebody that I have a date with and probably is calling to cancel, reschedule, you don't know what it be. So curiosity kill the cat. Eventually you are going to want to check that. And it's just simply going to take your attention away. So you might be working, but instead of working at hundred percent, you're going to be at a 70%, right? And by that, I'm not saying, well, completely disconnect from the world. And if there's an emergency, that's the problem. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is you have to ensure maximum productivity by preventing any type of distraction whatsoever. So rather than staying disconnected completely from the world for seven or eight hours at a time, what I do, I set up uh, chunks of time. So I set up the alarm to let me know that two hours has passed by or three hours has passed by. And that allows me to take a small break and maybe check my phone or maybe go and take a walk. That's why companies give you an hour lunch break because it's not only for you to eat, but also to take a break from the routine and, you know, just clear your mind and come back. That's why some companies allow you to have coffee break because uh, it's a half hour or a 15 minute break that you take and, you know, just get your mind off of what you're doing and then just come back. But if you don't want to do it, then that's fine. You maybe you can extend those breaks to up to four hours. And uh, once the four hours is up, you can actually check your phone and stay connected with everybody, whether it's through Facebook or through your partner and stuff like that. And if you don't believe me, think about when you are with that special someone uh, at the beginning of your relationship. I'm sure that a lot of your friends are sending you texts, asking you to hang out with them, but you, you don't care about those messages, right? You, you are in the zone. You are dedicating time and building that relationship with that special someone. So the same thing is with your work and your productivity. You have to 
give it that priority. You have to be in the zone to get stuff done so you can continue to move on and let things happen, right? Now, on to the very last tip. I always plan the next day, the night before. It's very simple. Why? Because you cannot really go that far if you don't have organization in your life. And if you don't believe me, think about celebrities, think about doctors and lawyers. They don't sit around waiting for you to just show up to the doorsteps. In fact, they're very busy people. And if anything, you have to make an appointment and wait until they are available or next time they are in town so you can actually go see them and ask them questions or just enjoy their company in the event of an artist, right? And the planning is actually very simple. You, In fact, you don't have to do it the night before because I know some of you could be parents and maybe you're helping your children with homework. You can do it next thing. Some of you could be morning people, right? And so when you do that, you wake up really early in the morning, you can plan your day that very same morning. In my case, I planned it the night before. Why? Because I am a night owl. I like to sleep in a little bit in the morning, but I am very, very productive late in the evening. But with Anthony, my partner, he is the opposite. He likes to wake up really early and he plans his day at the very early stages in the morning. And then he calls it a day uh, by the time I am just starting to get productive. So two different schedules, you have the option to choose what is best for you. But what's important is that you have to plan it beforehand. And the planning doesn't have to be something overly cumbersome. Just go through your agenda, check what you have tomorrow, and then just prioritize what it's important, but not urgent and what is important, but very urgent. Remember, nothing becomes urgent overnight. Things become urgent because of lack of planning. Maybe you were procrastinating or pushing things off oh, it's not important now. Maybe I could just do it tomorrow and then the next day and the next day until you hit that deadline and now you're like very stressed out and you're trying to get things done. So try not to let things get to that point because they are very draining and it's going to hinder your productivity. Now, for those who are actually curious and finding out more about this rank, let me know in the comments down below. Or if you're interested in investing in this rank, I'm also going to leave the link down below in the description box so you can check it out. Same thing with that little pedaling slash workout machine that you can use and incorporate that workout into your daily routine or your daily life. And while I have you here, do not forget to check this episode right here. That's going to help you complement everything you learned in today's episode. And that's pretty much it. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.